In my early teenage years, I loved the annual fair in my hometown. The atmosphere and the excitement of some of their attractions, I was pumped up with adrenaline and sugar. One of my favorite attractions was the bumper cars. I don't know what it was, but the rivalry, the battle in these wee cars was exhilarating. Building up as much speed as possible and hitting the right spot for the maximum impact. I'm not sure how safe they were, but the goal was clear. If your target jumped, that was a win. This reminds me that the nanoscopic scale is not that different from what we can see in the real life. Molecules are going to bump, collide into each other all the time. And if the speed is right, if the direction is right, something more than just a win will happen. So you might want to wear a helmet as we throw everything in and go head first into collision theory. This is Think4. Not all molecule colliding will produce a chemical reaction. In bumper cars, if you hit a car head-on, on the side or at the back, you won't get the same result. And that's exactly what happens at the nanoscopic scale. If chlorine collides with the CH3 of propene, nothing will happen. They will bump and go their separate way. But if Cl2 hits the double bond at the right angle, an addition reaction will be possible. I'm using a lot of conditional here. Should, could, might, why am I not sure? Another important condition needs to be just right. In my bumper car, if I bump into another car at low speed, not much will happen and we'll go our separate way. But if I accelerate and collide at full speed, bam, I win. Same idea for my chemical reaction. Chlorine colliding with propene will lead to nothing if the speed or kinetic energy of the two molecules is not enough. However, if the kinetic energy is above the activation energy, a chemical reaction can occur. We can represent this on an energy distribution graph. These graphs represent the number of molecules present in a solution depending on their kinetic energy. Some molecules will have a very low kinetic energy and will not be able to react. Most of the reactants will have an average kinetic energy. And finally, some molecules will have enough energy to be above the activation energy threshold. We can measure how many molecules by measuring the area under the curve past the activation energy line. These molecules will then be able to react. But this distribution is not set in stone. What if we increase the kinetic energy of all the molecules in our solution? Increasing the temperature of the solution will shift the whole curve to the right, and now more molecules will have enough energy to react. The rate of reaction has increased. Another way to get more molecules past the activation is, well, to move the activation energy line. We've seen in episode 12 that a catalyst can reduce the activation energy by using a different pathway for the reaction. So here you have it. Tiny nanoscopic bumper cars are constantly colliding with each other. And if the angle or the collision geometry is right, and if the speed or the kinetic energy is enough, a little wind will occur here and there, and the chemical reaction will happen. And if you remove the speed limits from the bumper cars, that would lead to many more big collisions, just like increasing the temperature for a chemical reaction. Now, if only I could have done that on my bumper car when I was 10. This was Think4. Thanks for watching.